Hello, my name is Nicolas Merritt, and today I'll be speaking on the use of therapeutic ultrasound to treat fracture. Uh, the article that I looked at was the trial to reevaluate ultrasound in the treatment of tibial fractures, trust, a multi center randomized pilot study. So, just to give a little bit of background on the use of ultrasound to treat fractures, um, ultrasound has been uh, supported by the FDA to be used to treat fracture. And if you can see here, the transducer of the ultrasound unit is normally placed on the skin above the fracture site. And the low intensity pulsed ultrasound produces a small nano motion at the fracture site. And this nano motion is detected by particles called integrins. And the biomechanical wave that's transmitted through the nano pulse is converted into a biochemical wave in the cell. And then one of the main actions of the cell is to produce cyclooxygenase. And this cyclooxygenase is then um, conducted by a, an enzyme, and the enzyme is then going to um, limit the production of prostaglandin Me2 or PG2, um, which is released from the cells and interacts with the surrounding cells uh, through the receptors. So this main action enhances the process of ossification, which is clear, uh, clearly the clinical response that we want in order to heal that bone in the fracture site. So in terms of this study design, uh, there were an end up of 51 adults that were uh, found through the study. The specific study was able to um, get the number of participants that they had using a 24-hour toll-free remote telephone randomization system that ensured concealment from both sides. Um, so everyone was uh, unknown of who the other individual was in terms of um, an anonymity. Participants in the study were then split into two different groups. One group which was assigned a uh, sham low-intensity pulse ultrasound unit and the other group which was assigned an active low-intensity ultrasound unit. Both of these units produced the same sounds, uh, the same uh, motions, the same lights, just one of them did not release any ultrasound and the other one did. All of the treating clinicians were all trauma trained orthopedic surgeons and outcome data was collected on patients at discharge at six weeks and three, four, five, six, nine, and twelve months post-operatively, so up to a year. In terms of the independent variables, the Exogen 2000 Plus is the transducer unit that would release the ultrasound, and then obviously the sham Exogen 2000 Plus would also be included as an independent variable. The dependent variables would include mainly the primary that was used for this study was the PCS score of the SF36, and then the secondary measures were radiographic evidence, which was analyzed through a radiographic union scale for the tibial fracture, and then the short muscular cell to function assessment and the health utilities index three. So in terms of outcomes for this uh, study, there wasn't any significant difference in terms of utilizing the sham versus utilizing the uh, actual ultrasound unit for these main outcome measures. Uh, the SF36 didn't show a significant measure, neither did the HUI3 or the RUST scores. So there wasn't any specific uh, significant difference in terms of how the patient felt or any of the radiographic evidence that showed that the healing um, was increased in using the ultrasound unit versus not using the ultrasound unit. And even a placebo, the placebo effect wasn't uh, available throughout this study either, which is very surprising. But in terms of the clinical application of ultrasound for um, your clinical practice, you have to take into account all of the available evidence. Um, as I stated previously, the FDA supports the use of therapeutic ultrasound treatment for the treatment of fractures, so more evidence probably needs to be done in the use of this specific device, the Exogen 2000 Plus, um, with tibial fractures or with fractures in general or additional research needs to be done with tibial fractures in terms of the use of ultrasound to assist with uh, their treatment. Um, but you should look into other research articles. I thought this one was interesting because uh, since the FDA supports the use and there wasn't any positive feedback from here, uh, it was a, a good read.